Hello there guys, welcome to another of my live videos. So this is your uh, Manchester United versus uh, Liverpool preview um, at Old Trafford um, on Sunday, um, half past four uh, kickoff. Uh, but the big question is, you know, can Ole Gunnar Solskjaer survive um, another uh, defeat um, at Manchester United? Because obviously we do know that he's um, under um, immense uh, pressure um, at the football club, reflecting um, on our uh, disastrous uh, start uh, to the season. Because obviously, you know, reports were indicating out uh, not too long ago, if we were to suffer um, a heavier defeat uh, to Liverpool, you know, that could put um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job um, in serious uh, jeopardy. And you know, we've already uh, suffered uh, three uh, defeats um, already uh, this season. Obviously, you know, losing at Newcastle last time out 1 0, losing at West Ham 2 0, and losing at Crystal Palace um, at home um, earlier on um, in the season. You know, we've only uh, won uh, two uh, games um, out of our first uh, May, and of course, uh, we are enjoying um, our worst start to a Premier League season uh, for uh, three uh, decades. Um, as for uh, Liverpool, um, obviously, you know, they've enjoyed um, a fantastic uh, start to the season. Obviously, you know, uh, They've won um, eight games um, out of eight. Um, obviously, you know they're sitting um, eight points clear um, ahead um, of Manchester City, and I think you know they are around uh, 15 points um, in front um, of Manchester United. So Liverpool have registered 24 points uh, from a possible uh, 24, and I think you know it's actually you know going to be a uh, Liverpool's uh, year uh, this year. You know to uh, win uh, the Premier League. Obviously, we do know that Liverpool have not won it um, overall uh, for uh, three uh, decades. They haven't ever uh, won uh, the Premier League. But like I mentioned, you know Liverpool um, have come close. Also, um, on quite um, a few um, occasions. Obviously, you know there was unlucky uh, last season. I think Liverpool registered 97 points last season, uh, but it still wasn't enough for them, you know, to uh, currently uh, win uh, the league. Because I think last season Manchester City, you know, won uh, like 14 uh, games um, on the trot. And obviously, you know, Liverpool drew too many games last season. I think that's you know what uh, cost them uh, the league uh, title. Obviously, don't forget, you know, they came close uh, back under the uh, Brendan uh, Rodgers era because they had uh, one good season um, under uh, Brendan uh, Rodgers. Uh, but it is uh, still um, early on um, in the season, you know, of course, um, anything uh, can happen. Um... But yeah, obviously, you know, Manchester United are um, massive uh, underdogs, you know, going um, into, into this uh, particular uh, game. But like I mentioned, you know, Liverpool's uh, record um, at Old Trafford um, is very, very poor. You know, they've only won twice um, at Old Trafford in the Premier League in the last uh, decade. Uh, them two uh, wins, you know, uh, came uh, back in 2014 uh, when we had David Moyes. Liverpool won by three goals to nil. And the other win was uh, back in 2009, of course, uh, when Liverpool uh, did uh, win uh, 4-1. Uh, obviously, you know, the game uh, was... Uh, nil nil uh, last season between the two sides um obviously um i think last season though um you know, there was quite a lot of injuries in that particular game in the nil-nil draw. You know, I think we had three players going off with injury. I think Liverpool had one of their players that went off with injury. Obviously, you know, Rashford uh, was limping um, on the pitch, but you know, Rashford, you know, managed uh, to play. I think uh, the full uh, ninety uh, minutes um, of the game. Um, but even though you know Liverpool um, are strides um, ahead of us um, at the moment, you know, I'd say they're at least what two, maybe three, maybe even four years um, ahead of us um, at this uh, present uh, time. You know, Manchester United and Liverpool, you know, is still um, an iconic fixture because obviously, you know, both clubs are the two most successful clubs um, in England. You know, um, historically, um, obviously, you know, reflecting on you know the success. You know, Liverpool, of course, have won eighteen old first divisions. Obviously, you know, we've uh, won uh, twenty uh, league uh, titles. Um, but I think overall, you know, Liverpool, I think have won around 43 trophies I think you know Manchester United um, have won um, around uh, 42 trophies so like I mentioned you know um, it is uh, the biggest uh, game b biggest game you know um, in English uh, football um, but yeah it is um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, versus uh, Jurgen uh, Klopp um, but yeah, I think, you know, the only way I think Man United are going to get out of this game is if we do uh, play um, out um, of our skins. I think that's the only chance, you know, we will have, you know, of uh, salvaging um, anything um, off Liverpool. Um, but like I said, you know, if if, if we don't win the game, um, I probably think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will still be at Manchester United because it hasn't been assured that he will be sat if we do uh, lose uh, the game. I think it, uh, it, um, it's a Norwich game where I think, you know, that could sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Obviously, you know, if we do uh, fail her to beat uh, Norwich, um, at the end um, of the month. Well, it's towards uh, the back end um, of this month um, is uh, the game um, against Norwich. But like I mentioned, you know, uh, we have uh, got our uh, games uh, coming up uh, thick um, and fast. Um, like I've already given you the team news uh, for uh, the game and that, um, obviously, you know, we've got uh, quite um, a lot of uh, players out of injury. But like I mentioned, the vast majority of our players that have been out of injury are expected to return uh, for uh, the game um, on Sunday. Like I give you the news recently, uh, it's confirmed that David De Gea and Paul Pogba are going to be missing this game uh, uh, Solskjaer, you know, actually, you know, uh, did uh, confirm that. Um, I'm actually, you know, uh, very, very um, infuriated um, about that. 
um, because we know how impotent we know Paul Pogba and David De Gea are. Um, obviously, you know, uh, with uh, David De Gea, um, he's currently out uh, with a leg injury, so he's going to be missing his first Premier League game, I think, for almost seven years. Um, he sustained um, an injury uh, whilst he was on international duty with Spain, which was obviously on Tuesday. David De Gea, don't forget, had to come off um, injured um, in the second half. Um, I don't, uh, well, I think at the first, uh, the extent of the injury uh, was um, unknown, but it has been revealed. Um, it's, you know, obviously, you know, bad enough, the injury, obviously, you know, to, you know, um, rule him out um, of the game um, against uh, Liverpool. So, obviously, you know, with David De Gea's injury, obviously, we're going to have to put Sergio Romero in goal because, obviously, Romero um, is our uh, second choice uh, goalkeeper. Uh, we know he mainly plays in the Cup in the Europa League games, but, you know, he's only going to be playing in this particular game against Liverpool because of the um, injury um, of David uh, De Gea and that. Um, obviously we've got Lee Grant as well, you know, he's another one of our backup goalkeepers, obviously, you know, the other two goalkeepers obviously are, are on loan, you know, Dean Enson's on loan with Sheffield United, and you've got Lee Grant um, on loan, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, not Lee Grant, sorry, uh, Joe Pereira on loan uh, with Hearts um, in Scotland, um, but like I mentioned, you know, David De Gea, um, he's very, very um, imperative, and, you know, overall, I think you know, um, he is uh, the best uh, goalkeeper um, in the world, I wouldn't say at this present time, because I think David De Gea's had a, like, poor nine or ten months or something like that with Man United but I think prior to that he's had a really really good uh, career uh, with the football club and David De Gea's been at Man United uh, years he's now into his ninth season at Manchester United and I definitely would say he's had what seven good years or seven and a half good years out of the eight years you know um, he has uh, been here um, obviously he has won everything here domestically you know he's been here since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson era and of course David De Gea is the highest player highest paid at the football club and he's actually the highest paid goalkeeper in the world because David De Gea um, is on uh, 375 uh, grand um, a week um, at the football club um but um yeah, so yeah, he's injured, but hopefully, you know, David De Gea, you know, can be back, you know, for the Norwich game and you know, you know, the Chelsea game and all that, hopefully. So I'm hopeful that the injury is not uh, too uh, severe. Um like I mentioned uh, in regards uh, to uh, Paul Pogba, well, there's been change of sceneries about, you know, Paul Pogba and that because I, it wasn't too long ago I read uh, reports from Talk Sport and they were saying that, you know, Paul Pogba, you know, was set to return uh, for uh, this game. But again, there's been a change of scenery. But it actually, reports were speculating um, earlier on this week saying that, um, you know, Paul Pogba, you know, it's almost assured that Paul Pogba will miss the game against Liverpool. Obviously, you know, with his ongoing foot injury, that has obviously, you know, been surrounding the player uh, for a matter of weeks and obviously reflecting on Paul Pobber's injury you know that's uh, you know that's uh, made him miss the f I think the last I think the five five out of the last uh, seven uh, games he had, he, had, he actually has uh, missed him as Paul Pogba um, he did play the full nine minutes against Rochdale um, and you know Arsenal but obviously in them particular games you know um, he didn't uh, look uh, fully um, fit and Paul Pogba is going to be um, a big uh, miss um, in that uh, midfield because uh, obviously you know I know that Paul Pobb has mainly enjoyed um, a difficult time um, at Manchester United, you know, since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016, you know, but we have seen glimpses of how good he can be, you know, we mainly saw the best of Paul Pobb uh, in that three-month period, you know, when um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, was uh, the interim uh, manager, but I think prior to that, you know, he hasn't really performed to the standards as we all expected, you know, um, you know, and he's enjoyed a difficult time, you know, in comparison to his time, you know, when he was at Juventus because Paul Pobber uh, did um, have four good years um, in cheering uh, with Juventus. And, you know, like I mentioned, you know, I think Paul Pobber is one of the players that's going to leave Manchester United in January. If he doesn't leave in January, um, I think um, he will uh, leave uh, next summer. And I still believe Paul Pobber's preference is a move to Real Madrid, you know, like it was um, early on um, in the summer. Well, like it was uh, for the entirety of the summer, should I say. Um, because obviously Real Madrid uh, were relentlessly uh, linked to him. And it's, I did say his move to Real Madrid uh, never uh, materialised. Um, obviously, you know, reflecting on the substantial amount, you know, Man United put on him because we quoted out that we wanted around 180 million. So he was demanding over double and what we paid for him from Juventus back in 2016 because, you know, United paid eight to nine million pounds for him. Obviously, um, he's um, our most um, expensive uh, signing. Um, but quite a few teams went in for him during the summer. You know, it wasn't he wasn't only Real Madrid. Uh, obviously, Barcelona inquired about getting him. Like I said, there was reports about him possibly making a return uh, back to uh, Turin. Uh, Paul Popper's 26 years of age, so you can still, quite frankly, say he's in his prime. He has uh, still uh, got um, a lot of uh, years ahead of him. Uh, but he did reveal um, early on in the summer, well, back in... Back uh, in the summer, you know, that he obviously you know, wanted her to leave uh, Manchester United. Um, 
uh, because obviously he wanted to leave her to rejuvenate um, his career in that. And um, yeah, but I think, you know, he still uh, wants her to leave uh, the football club. Don't forget, reports were speculating out uh, the other week, you know, saying that, you know, if he was to, you know, extend his contract at Man United, he was looking for around £600,000 a week. You know, if he was to extend his contract, six hundred grand a week, of course, equates to around £30 million a year. And Paul Pobre on his uh, current uh, deal um, at the moment, you know, he's on around, what, two hundred ninety grand a week, so he's on just under £300,000 a week. And in that aspect, you know, he is still one of the highest played players at the football club. Still two years left on his current deal with an option, you know, to um, extend it uh, by um, third year. Um but um yeah but like i mentioned you know you you can tell the difference in that midfield when paul pop is you know playing and you can tell the difference you know when he's when he's uh taking them out um the equation so it is a big big miss for manchester united that paul popper and david de Gea, of course um are not going to be um, involved but you know the good news is you know if in regards to marshall and luke shaw you know they're expected to be back um on sunday you know which is very very good because we know that Anthony Marshall um, and Luke Shaw, you know, are very, very um, imperative uh, players uh, for uh, Manchester United, and they both haven't, you know, played since the two-one home defeat uh, to Crystal Palace um, earlier on um, in the season. Uh, now, like I mentioned, you know, I thought Anthony Marshall enjoyed a fantastic uh, start uh, to the season. Uh, obviously, you know, before he uh, sustained uh, that thigh injury, um, and I think Marshall is a very, very imperative player. Like I do keep mentioning, I think he's more effective in that number nine role, you know, in that central. Position. Position, and that's where he will probably, you know, it's probable, you know, that he will uh, play there um, on Sunday, Marshall. Uh, Marshall and Rashford, obviously, you know, can both play in the same position, so they are compatible in that aspect. But in my opinion, Rashford, you know, seems to be better out on the flank. You know, I don't think, you know, that number nine role suits him. You know, my preference will be Marshall over Rashford, you know, in regards to who plays him in that number nine between them two. Um, but Marshall now is into his fifth season um, as a Manchester United player. Like I mentioned, he's scored over 50 goals for the club in all competitions, um, you know, since his arrival from Monaco. And he has, Marshall has been here uh, since uh, Louis uh, van Gaal uh, Marais. And like I mentioned, when he plays, he has inspiration in that attacking third the pitch, and he will be in that fluid, didn't he? You know, um, in that um, attacking third line. He's still only 23, and I don't think you know he's quite uh, emulated uh, to that level um, as yet. Um, but you know, he still uh, needs to be given uh, more time. Marshall can score a lot of goals this season. You know, if he can avoid it sustaining any more injuries and that, because you know we are still um, uh, only um, early on, early on um, in the season. Um, but it's glad to be seeing him back, you know, with Luke Shaw. Same thoughts about him than Marshall. I know a lot of people have got a limited concerns about Luke Shaw. Obviously, you know, reflecting on the amount of injuries he's sustained. And you can quite frankly say, you know, he is injury prone. He's Luke Shaw. And, you know, back under Mourinho, had a bad spell. But I think, you know, prior to that, I think he's mainly had a good career with the club. You know, he won the double player of the season last season, reflecting um, on his impressive performances, you know, did, uh, David, uh, did uh, Luke Shaw... Um, but yeah, he's obviously you no know, um, our uh, first choice uh, left back, so it will be good to see him. Obviously, you know, uh, back um, in contention. Um... And Wan Bissaka, you know, it'd be also good to see him, you know, uh, back um, in contention because he's missed the last two games for the football club. Last two league games, he's missed the last three in all competitions with illness. Um, as you all know, and Wan Bissaka um, has been um, out there with tonsillitis. Um, and like I mentioned, a lot of people believe, you know, he's been one of our most consistent signings so far. And like I mentioned, if and Wan Bissaka, you know, can't uh, keep uh, the consistency up, you know, I think his valuation will persistently grow in that. And he definitely, I think, we you know, will become um, a successor um, at Manchester United uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt um, but yeah very very happy he's going to be back uh, Jesse Lingard I think he recently said you know he's not going to be playing in the game against Liverpool um, he's actually you know, been out with a hamstring injury um, as Jesse Lingard he was actually ill uh, earlier on in the season uh, but I think he's enjoyed a really really bad start to this season as Lingard uh, he's, replica he's replicating basically what he did in the last couple of months of last season because he was part in the last couple of months of last season uh, and reflecting on his stays at the football club you know he should be you know putting a much more uh, better uh, performances um, out um, but yeah yeah, I think, you know, he's going to be unavailable. When obviously Eric Bay is obviously not going to be available, you know, Eric Bay is out um, until uh, the new year. Uh, or is it, oh, it might be the end of December, but obviously, you know, near to, towards uh, the new year. He sustained a knee injury, you know, don't forget, you know, during our uh, pre-season, uh, did uh, Eric Bay. Um, 
Obviously, we know that Fosu Mensa, of course, um, is still um, out of injury. You know, Victor Lindlof's recently you know, been out with a back injury. Um, but Victor Lindlof should be back. You know, Lindlof has only missed one league game this season, and that was the last uh, game um, against uh, Newcastle. Due to Lindlof's absence, I think Alex Tuanzebe fulfilled his role alongside Harry McGwright um, in our back line. Um, but Lindelof, like I mentioned, you know, I think he's done well for Manchester United and, you know, he's one of the players I would definitely keep, you know, he's a fluish name at Manchester United. I think he's had a bad, you know, a couple of uh, bad uh, games uh, this season, but I think prior to that, you know, he's mainly done well and I think he has to be fair, blended in alongside uh, Harry McGwire uh, fantastically well um, as Victor Lindelof. Um, but yeah, he should be uh, back uh, definitely now uh, for uh, Sunday. Diego Dallos, um, obviously you not know, being um, out uh, of injury, uh, like I uh, mentioned, he's uh, been out of injury. He's, a he's actually sustained uh, quite um, a few injuries, you know, so far uh, this season. Um, is Diego Dallot. Um, you know, he was out of a groin problem not too long ago. He's out now of a current injury. Um, I still believe Diego Dallo, you know, needs to be uh, given more uh, time um, at the football club, um, in my um, opinion, because he's only been here uh, since uh, last summer. Um, but yeah, would definitely you know uh, give him uh, more uh, time. Um, um... Obviously, you know, Phil Jones um, has been um, injured. Um... But yeah, and you know, we've had a lot of um, injuries uh, this season and obviously, you know, reflecting um, on the injuries uh, we've had, obviously, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, alterations um, in that um, in the squad. Um... But Liverpool themselves, you know, they've had uh, quite um, a few um, injuries, you know, nowhere near to the extent of how many injuries Man United have had. Uh, they've obviously recently had Allenson injured of Liverpool. Um, obviously, you know, he's been out of a calf problem, but he's expected to play on Sunday. He's expected to start. Uh, Salah, of course, um, he's been out of an ankle problem, but he's definitely no um, expected her to start. Um, you know, I think he came off injured in Liverpool's 2-1 win over Leicester. Um you know, obviously, Joe Matip, it's confirmed, you know, he's back in training for Liverpool. Obviously, one of their centre-back options. Um, you know, obviously, they've got Nathaniel Klein out until January. But obviously, he's injury prone um, anywhere uh, for uh, Liverpool is, you know, uh, Nathaniel uh, Klein. And I think they've actually, you know, got Shaqiri out, you know, uh, with uh, McCarr from them. So, they're the only injuries, you know, Liverpool, of course, um, I've had. But like I mentioned, you know, I hate to... You know, credit my arch rivals and that, but I've got to credit, you know, Jurgen Klopp because I think, you know, his philosophy and that, you know, he's got a good philosophy, you know, to be on quite a monist with you. Um, obviously, you know, Jurgen Klopp's been at Liverpool now, you know, quite, 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 quite a while. I think he's been there around three or four years or something like that. And obviously, you know, when he first, you know, went into Liverpool, obviously, you know, he did uh, really, really struggle and that. And obviously, you know, reflecting on that, you know, the pressure, you know, did mount up on him. But obviously, you know, he did uh, after that period, you know, that bad spell, you know, he, he fixed everything around them um, at Liverpool, you know, uh, basically. And a lot of people believe, you know, this might sound daft, but a lot of people believe if we do give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, more time at Manchester United, then some people believe he could uh, emulate um, into Jurgen Klopp uh, because sometimes it does take managers time you know to settle in and that and you know get everything right um but you know Jordan Klopp you know hasn't really won much um, in terms of silverware you know he obviously you know won his first major honour with Liverpool last season and um, obviously you know Liverpool winning the Champions League and obviously you know Liverpool have won you know six Champions Leagues obviously you know he won the Super Cup uh, I think um, early on um, in the season and obviously before I was at Liverpool I think you know he won um, a couple of uh, titles there uh, with uh, Borussia uh, Dortmund um, but yeah he's actually you now um, really really um, good uh, manager but you know Liverpool's expectations will be to win the league this season like I mentioned you know, they've actually you know, never uh, won uh, the Premier League and that. Um, but Manchester United-Liverpool, like I mentioned, is always, always um, a big game. You know, and a lot of people thought, you know, Liverpool, you know, would crumble, you know, when they lost the likes of Philip Coutinho and Luis Suarez, you know, to Barcelona. But, you know, uh, they didn't, uh, you know, uh, to be fair. Uh, but I honestly think, you know, um, it's going to be uh, their uh, year uh, this season, um, my um, own um, opinion. But, um, um But, you know, if we was, you know, to pull a shock off, you know, um, on Sunday, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, getting over excited and that. Because, you know, this is the type of game, you know, where Manchester, you know, my club, Man United, you know, could be fired up and that. Because, obviously, you know, the fiercest rivals are um, Manchester United um, and Liverpool and that. And we always seem to mainly do well against them um, at Old Trafford. Um, but, you know, I'm still... 
you know, I probably am. St I'm still Oligan and Solskjaer, you know, out, you know, even if we do uh, win uh, the game and that, because obviously, you know, it, um, it is, um, you know, um, only a uh, one game. You know, one game if we win is obviously, you know, not going to change uh, the situation um, at Manchester United, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, I will be, you know, uh, still um, Oligan and Solskjaer out because I just don't think he's uh, the right uh, man for the football club. I just don't think he's the right man, you know, to elevate uh, Manchester United forward. And, you know, you, you, you're getting the vast majority of Man United fans demanding Solskjaer are now out of the football club. You obviously got a lot of them demanding him out after the 2-0 uh, defeat uh, to West Ham and I think a lot of Man United fans do believe that Solskjaer will be gone by Christmas. I think also a lot of industries and in that believe um, he will be uh, gone uh, by uh, Christmas but you're still getting some certain Manchester United fans, you're still getting some certain form, you're still getting uh, some former Man United players that are backing um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and you know some actually you know some of them have been saying that we should give we should give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at least um, a couple more windows, you know, to see who else, of course, um, he can uh, recommend in uh, to the football club, um, you know. Uh, saying you know who you know saying you know who we who we can uh, recommend in uh, to the football club and that as you all know Solskjaer um, is already uh, making uh, plans uh, for uh, January and that and you know if Oligan Solskjaer is to be still at Manchester United in January I think he still wants to continue the policy of recruiting uh, young uh, British players you know like he did do um, earlier on um, in the summer but yeah there's still some people say we should give him um, a couple more of uh, windows because you know obviously a massive rebuild is needed at Manchester United and like I mentioned recently. I think we need at least five to six more signings at least, you know, if we are to be back, you know, to being um, a competitive um, elite uh, level football club. And quite frankly, we need to address all the deficient we need to address all the deficiency areas um in the squad, you know, that we didn't uh, manage to do, you know, during uh, the course um in the summer. We did manage, you know, some of the problem problematic areas, you know, during the summer, which was very, very good. You know, we got the experienced centre half in, you know, we also got that right back in. And Solskjaer, you know, I credit him, he did recommend three good signings to the squad during the summer. You know, we spent obviously a hundred and nearly a hundred and fifty million pounds on Dan James and Wan Bissaka and on Harry uh, Maguire. And you know, they've all they've all enjoyed great uh, starts uh, to their uh, Manchester United uh, careers. But you can still quite frankly say Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding this Man United team because analysing the majority of this Man United team isn't, you know, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's. The majority of this team is Jose Mourinho's because don't forget Jose Mourinho recommended 11 players um, into the Manchester United team. Um into the Man into the uh, Manchester United team and obviously now Solskjaer um, is still um, inheriting uh, the vast uh, majority um, of them so that's something of course uh, you can't uh, take um, into an in a take into account and you know a lot of people believe us getting rid of Solskjaer now at this moment in time or just before Christmas you know they believe it wouldn't solve a lot of their problems um, at the football club because you can't just put all the blame um, on all going to Solskjaer you know with our uh, disastrous uh, start to the season Um and that, you know, there's obviously, you know, other people, you know, that do have to uh, take uh, some uh, responsibility. You know, like I mentioned on my recent videos, you know, I think, you know, a lot of the blame does stem from a lot of the players because the players obviously, you know, are not, you know, playing for the badge. You know, they're not showing any heart. They're not showing any passion. They're not showing any, they're not showing any desire. And, you know, they just... They're not. They're just not showing any of that, and I think we're also lacking our leaders um, in the team. And some of the blame, obviously, you know, has got to stem from Ed Woodward. You know, he has to take some responsibility. I think also, I think the vast majority of the blame uh, does uh, stem from the board. You know, because like I do keep mentioning, the board have been a liability for several years. You know, obviously with their poor recruitment and that, you know, and with, with their uh, poor uh, selection um, of managers. Um, and the board as well didn't back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer enough during the course of the summer, as, you know, they did um, actually know um, sure. Um But, you know, you got a lot of Man United fans saying that, you know, well, some, not a lot, but maybe some, that are saying, you know, we should stick with Solskjaer and we should get rid of our current board. And, you know, I recommend them a new board in um, and all that. So a lot of United fans believe it's, you know, most of the blame um, is stemming uh, from uh, the board. Uh, the board, I think, actually did confirm at the start of this season that, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, will stay at Man United at least until May because I think they realised that they uh, didn't uh, back him um, enough, you know, during uh, the course um, in the summer. Uh, 
But yeah, in my opinion, most of the blame does stem from the board and that. But recently, the likes of, you know, Rio Ferdinand came out and, you know, he uh, believes Man United, you know, would be naive to sack a Mulligan and Solskjaer. You know, Ryan Giggs believes also Solskjaer needs more time at the club. Um, this is what, you know, Ryan Giggs said. You know, Gary Neville come out a couple of weeks ago, as you all know, and he criticised uh, the Manchester United board. Uh, obviously, recent reports have revealed that actually Solskjaer and Gary Neville both met up together. Um, obviously, you know, Neville, obviously, you know, wanted to get some feedback and that uh, from Oligan and Solskjaer. And I also credit Solskjaer because he's actually, you know, got a lot of honesty about him. Obviously, you know, he is aware of what's going on. Obviously, you know, he's aware that he's um, under a serious uh, pressure at the football club. Um, and obviously, you know, the pressure will keep mounting up on him, especially if we do uh, lose uh, to Liverpool um, on Sunday. Um, and it's obviously been uh, revealed how much it will cost Manchester United to get rid of Solskjaer. And obviously, you know, we'll have to pay around uh, £7 million in compensation to get rid of him, you know, which is around half than what we paid uh, to get rid of uh, Jose Mourinho. Because um, I think we paid around, tw around was it around £19, £20 million pounds, uh, to get rid of uh, Jose Mourinho, you know, if you do uh, remember uh, rightly. Um If yeah, you do uh, remember uh, rightly in that. Um, but um, yeah, and um, I've just been reading uh, recent uh, reports, and I actually you know um, updated you about it um, on my last uh, video. I did actually you know update you about it um, on my last video. Um, I did reportedly say that um, you know Oligan Solskjaer has defended uh, the club's current structure. Um, so what he means is, you know, he's, he he believes Manchester United, you know, don't uh, need um, a director um, of football in, and I think the club um, have been in search uh, for um, a director um, of football uh, for the last uh, what ten months now. Don't forget, for the majority of the summer, you know, was try we was trying to recommend um, a new uh, director of football into the football club uh, because I did say, you know, that's where one of the structural changes, you know, we need um, at Manchester. United. And I said, I said our board needs to assure structural changes um, at the football club. And you could arguably say, if we'd have got that direct to the football, then you know during the course of the summer, then maybe in that aspect, maybe you know Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, would have uh, been uh, back more. But you know there was quite. There was quite a few form. There was some form Man United players linked with that director's role during the summer, like I mentioned. Um, obviously, we do know there's been a uh, recent uh, talks about you know um, Ed Wood. Uh, uh, Edwin van der Sar, I think Ed Woodward, you know, was keen on recommending him into the football club as becoming um, our new uh, director um, of football and that. And I think Edwin van der Sar did indicate how at some point in his future, you know, he would be actually happy, you know, to return to the club because, you know, he did describe Manchester United, you know, um, as a fantastic club and that, you know, van der Sar. Um, don't forget, you know, van der Sar, you know, did a server, um, uh, did a server, um, you know, six years at Man United from 2005 to 2011 and that, um, you know, obviously and that. And, you know, I said, you know, it would be beneficial to recommend someone who knows about the culture of the club, someone who's got that experience and, you know, someone who would be reliable to oversee our transfer business. And definitely um, Edwin van der Sar would be the right uh, candidate, in my opinion, because he's obviously the chief executive now at Ajax. And I think his, you know, work um, at Ajax um, has been um, absolutely, you know, uh, fantastic. Uh, so at some point in his future, you know, he could, you know, return uh, to uh, the football club. But maybe we won't you know, uh, get um, a new uh, director um, of football in. Um, and, uh, yeah, but like I mentioned, you know, Solskjaer you know, hasn't had a long tenure uh, so uh, so far um, at the football club. You know, Solskjaer you know, has only been at Manchester United, you know, since uh, December um, of last year. So he's been here now for around 10 months um, overall. So he's been at the football club, you know, uh, just um, under um, a year. Um, obviously, you know, since... Um, you know, so you can say Solskjaer's enjoyed a difficult, what, seven-month tenure at the football club because we know, obviously, it's all gone wrong, you know, since um, he got uh, the job uh, permanently. Uh, we've only won five of our last 19 uh, in the league, you know, since he got the job permanently and we've only won five of our last 23 in all competitions, you know, since uh, he got uh, the job uh, perm permanently. So that just indicates how, how bad, you know, it's gone, you know, since uh, he got uh, the job uh, permanently at Manchester United. And don't forget, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, he's on um, a three-year uh, contract contract uh, with the football club because he did get the job back in March um, earlier on uh, this year uh, but like I mentioned Solskjaer you know first came in um, as the interim manager at the football club and you know he was interim manager for three months but in that three month period you know um, he did uh, really really well you know he got the best out of these group of players you know the results were good the performances were good you know um, he exceeded them um, expectations um, you know the 
the brand of football was fantastic, you know, and it was just absolutely yeah, fantastic um, in that three-month period and that. But, you know, I think, you know, the, the brand of football now um, is absolutely you now um, atrocious. Just, just, you know, the style of play is poor. Um, I mean, it's actually you now being revealed that, you know, we have uh, the fourth uh, worst... Um, you know, record in the Premier League as well since Solskjaer was appointed Man United manager. You know, I think we've only registered 17 points from our last, what, 17 games. Um, you know, I think it's only Southampton, Brighton and Watford that uh, have, you know, that have uh, worse records uh, than Manchester United. So that just indicates how, you know, how embarrassing, you know, where we are um, at the moment. But I think the board are only sticking with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer anyway at this present time is because, you know, he was a club legend. You know, he was a great player uh, for Manchester United for 11 years. You know, um, he flourished um, under uh, Malik Ferguson's guidance, did Solskjaer. Uh, and obviously Solskjaer, as a player, in total, he made 366 appearances for the football club and he scored 126 goals. That was in all competitions. Um, and just in the league alone, he made 230 was it two hundred around two hundred thirty five appearances and scored ninety one goals and obviously one one of Oligan Solskjaer's most iconic uh, moments um, as a player obviously you no know, was uh, back um, in nineteen ninety nine obviously when when of course you know when he did uh, win uh, the club uh, the treble um, you know that was obviously you no know, just over uh, two uh, decades um, ago now but that's obviously you know one of the club's uh, greatest um, achievements so he has got that proven pedigree as a player but you know Solskjaer like I mentioned doesn't doesn't have um, any intuition um, as a manager his tactics and that are questionable you know so they're the element of concerns I've got about him um, and he just hasn't really got that managerial managerial um, experience you know to the highest level like I mentioned you know before he came to Manchester United you know he won a couple of Norwegian titles of mould um, obviously, you know, he had a really, really short tenure with Cardiff. He actually began his, um, I think, his managerial career with Cardiff. Um, he only managed um, around uh, 30 games with Cardiff, did Solskjaer. Um, um, and he actually you know, ended up, you know, getting uh, Cardiff uh, relegated. And, you know, a lot of Man United fans, you know, do fear he fear, fear that, you know, he could replicate what he did at Cardiff and bring that, he, could, he could replicate, you know, at Manchester United, sorry, you know, what he uh, did um, at Cardiff and that. Because, you know, we are actually, you know, only uh, two points um, off relegation. We're only two points off relegation at the moment. Um, you know, two points off relegation. Um because we're sitting uh, currently at 12th um, in the league um, at the moment. Um, but yeah, I don't think we'll get relegated, you know, like I did uh, currently uh, mention, because like I said, the club's too big, you know, there's too much uh, money um, and that um, into the football club. So, you know, I don't uh, think, you know, uh, that uh, will um, happen. Um, but, you know, everything, you know, basically needs to improve with the football club. You know, the home form needs to improve because the home form's atrocious. Uh, the away form needs to improve. We haven't won away from home since last season. You know, when we did PSG, you know, when the club uh, did uh, produce uh, that uh, miraculous uh, comeback. Um, um, style of play needs to improve. Uh, performances need to improve. We need to see better results. Um, so everything, you know, just basically, you know, needs to um, improve um, at Manchester United. And like I mentioned, despite the fact that um, a lot of uh, players um, have left, you know, since, um, um, you know, since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival and that, you know, I still believe, you know, these um, are players uh, that do uh, need to uh, leave uh, the football club. Because um, I still believe there's problematic players at the club. Um, you know, um, in my um, opinion, um, like I mentioned, Italy's been uh, a very popular destination for the vast majority of our players that have left. Because obviously, a lot of them went to Italy, you know, during uh, the course of um, the summer. Um, but um, yeah, and I think you know, a mistake for Manchester United, you know, was obviously you know giving uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer uh, the job. You know, like I mentioned, we shouldn't have uh, never uh, given uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer the job in the first place. And like I mentioned, I do feel sorry for Mulligan and Solskjaer in a way because you know I think the club um, have put him in um, a very very um, difficult uh, position. You know, to be um, quite uh, honest with you. Um, You know, the club um, have put him um, in a very, very um, difficult uh, position, um, in my um, opinion, and that. So I do feel sorry for him, you know, in uh, certain um, aspects and that. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, um, you know, like I said, these more players, you know, uh, that do uh, need to leave the football club. I think probably there's another four or five more that do need to leave. And I think we need to bring, like I mentioned, another at least uh, five um, or six more uh, signings um, in. But I think Manchester United have actually assured 
that they'll bring you know, they'll you know get Solskjaer around six more signings you know if he's still to be at the football club in January and of course uh, next summer um, I was obviously reading reports the other day saying that you know we are prepared to back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with eight new signings over the course of the next two summers uh, probably that's obviously not going to be happening because he won't be here uh, within uh, the next uh, two summers I doubt very very much you know he even you know will be uh, here by uh, January and that Um but um yeah, so like I um updated you um obviously you know um earlier on uh, today and that um I updated you didn't I um earlier on uh, today um you know in regards uh, to uh, Max uh, Maligri and like I mentioned we have got a list of managers on our agenda you know who could uh, replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer um, at the football club but obviously we do know that you know Max Allegri um is obviously the club's primary candidate is a top priority you know to uh, replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer now there has been a lot of speculation about Max Allegri going on now uh, for quite uh, some time you know recent reports have indicated how you know he's actually learning English well he's actually been learning English uh, for quite some time in preparation for his potential move um, and uh, you know his, his reports were saying yesterday a lot of reports were saying that you know he's closer to becoming a uh, Manchester United uh, next uh, manager to uh, replace uh, Mulligan and Solskjaer so if Max Allegri you know, was to come in Obviously, you know, he would be our uh, fifth uh, permanent manager uh, since, you know, uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and uh, Moreira. But maybe, you know, maybe a lot of Man United fans or some Man United fans, you know, have believed that Max Allegri, you know, would be the right candidate. He would be able to elevate, you know, uh, Manchester United forward. Um, and that, um, obviously, you know, Max Allegri um, has, you know, demanded quite a few things if he is to take over, you know, Manchester United. You know, he wants to recommend Emre Chant and Mario Mandzukic in. With, in. He also said not too long ago that he wanted to recommend Patrice Everin um, as one of his uh, backroom staff as well. Um, you know, obviously Patrice Everett um, is a former uh, Manchester United player. But yeah, Max Allegri is been in discussions with the football club obviously discussing his salary in that and I think if he's to come to Man United he will earn around six point five million pounds a year. That has uh, actually nowhere uh, been uh, confirmed or maybe around six point five million um, or maybe um, just over that, uh, but I think it's confirmed he will he will earn more than what he did currently earn um, at Juventus. And we know Max Allegri is fifty two. Well, he's in his early fifties. Um, you know he hasn't been managerless for that long. You know he stepped down as Juventus manager um, at the end um, of last season. Don't forget, he did. He had a five-year tenure with Juventus. Like I mentioned, he won five consecutive Serie A titles. Um, did you know? Um, you know Max Allegri won four Coppa Italians. Um, and he led Juventus to two Champions League finals, and that you know he's, you know he's. Uh, I think he controlled the transfer policies as well, because like I mentioned, Juventus do, have done good business. You know uh, they've got a good budget. Um, they've got good players, like I mentioned, the Juventus. Um, but yeah, he's actually spent the entirety of his managerial career so far. You know, in Italy, you know, as. Um, Max Allegri, um, he obviously spent the entirety of his playing career in Italy and that, but he's been managing for a lot of years, so he's got that managerial experience, he's been managing for just over 16 years, because he began his managerial career um, in 2003 and that, um, but yeah, so Solskjaer reported he's close to being sat, and uh, Max Allegri is the likely candidate, you know, to come in to replace him, um, but there's obviously, like I mentioned, you know, being other managers mentioned, um, you know, a lot of United fans were talking about Wenger, you know, uh, coming in uh, the other week, um, obviously Wenger has, Arsene Wenger's been managerless, you know, for over a year, you know, he stepped down as Arsenal manager back in May 2018, and um, obviously he was long serving at Arsenal, you know, he served uh, 22 uh, years there with Arsenal, Obviously, I think he enjoyed 12 good years out of the 22 years um, he was there. Um, he had a pretty decent seg legacy, you know, nowhere near to the same you know, extent of the legacy you know, Alex Ferguson had at Manchester United, but he still had a pretty decent legacy. And you know, a lot of United fans believe that you know, Wenger would be the right candidate for United, um, but he's obviously not one of the likely, you know, he's not the, one of the favourites to come in. You know, um, you know there was recent talks you know, going on about uh, Laurent uh, Blanc, um, the former PSG manager, Laurent Blanc's actually been managerless now for nearly four years. Because don't forget, you know, Laurent Blanc did step down um, as PSG manager uh, in 2016. Um, he served around three years with PSG. You know, the only teams he managed, uh, you know, well, has only managed so far is PSG, the French national team, and Bordeaux. Um, he managed Bordeaux for a good three years, and um, 
he actually, you know, started managing uh, managing um, in 2007. You know, Laurent Blanc, um, obviously, you know, uh, during his playing career, did play for Man United. You know, he did uh, serve um, a couple of uh, years um, at the football club. But he also got mentioned quite recently. And he actually was linked with a vacant uh, managerial uh, role um, at Lyon uh, quite recently. You know, it was a... <coughs> you know, it was a... Um, you know, uh, Laurent uh, Blanc, uh, Pochettino, don't forget, you know, we was in for Mauricio Pochettino for a very, very long time, you know, before, you know, we recommended Solskjaer, I mean, because after the sacking of Jose Mourinho, you know, we actually, you know, uh, went in uh, for uh, Mauricio uh, Pochettino for a very, very long time, but obviously we didn't get him, um, but like I mentioned, Pochettino, um, he's under serious pressure now at Tottenham, um, like I mentioned, but it's unlikely he'll come in, you know, he's no longer, you know, uh, the club's uh, top uh, priority, um, is Mauricio uh, Pochettino, um, but like I said, you know, um, you know, it will be Max Allegri, I think, who comes in if Solskjaer, you know, um, is to be uh, sat. And Solskjaer's obviously going to be sat, you know, he's going to be, you know, the fourth manager, you know, to be sat uh, by uh, the football club. Because already, you know, three managers um, have been uh, sat uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Moreira. Um, but like I mentioned, reflecting on the money that's been spent at the football club and also reflecting on, you know, uh, you know the size and the potential of this club and the history of the club, you know, we should be um, in much more um, commanding a position, you know, than winning uh, now. And like I mentioned, you know, Solskjaer is aware of the expectations, you know, around him at Manchester United and is aware what he, the expectations he has, you know, He's aware of the expectations and that, you know, he has, he has to exceed, you know, if he's to, you know, remain at Manchester United. And, you know, we need to get into that top four this season. And I said at the start of the season, you know, our expectations this season, you know, will be to finish in that top four and that this is what, you know, I basically uh, said. Uh, so, obviously, in that aspect, you know, we can get back into the Champions League and that because, obviously, last season uh, we failed uh, to qualify uh, for the Champions League. Um, and I think that was one of the main factor reasons, like I mentioned, you know, that went against us during uh, the course of um, the summer. Because, obviously, you know, if you're not in Champions League football, then, obviously, it's going to be hard, uh, it's gonna be hard uh, to attract uh, players uh, to the um, elite uh, level. Um, uh, this is what I basically um, said. But, um, you know... I said initially, you know, our aspirations, you know, will be that top four uh, for the next uh, couple of uh, seasons, basically, because analysing our squad, you know, it isn't, it's definitely no, not uh, good enough, you know, uh, to win uh, the league, you know, where uh, we do um, all know that. But I think it's definitely, you know, uh, good enough, you know, uh, for um, a top four uh, finish, you know, uh, without um, a shadow um, of a doubt. Um, but, um, yeah, but um, a lot of money's been spent at Manchester United, you know, in all the managerial um, areas, you know, since Ferguson, you know, nearly £150 million on the Solskjaer, you know, just under £400 million the Mourinho was spent, you know, £200 million was spent on the Van Gaal, you know, £67 million was spent on the Moyes. So it's around £700 odd, £800 million that's been spent at Man United in that, and that's just under a billion pounds that's been spent, and that's obviously not, you know, taking into account, you know, what was spent on the Ferguson and that, um, because like I mentioned, um, under Ferguson, you know, Ferguson, you know, did uh, develop, Ferg Alex Ferguson, you know, developed um, a lot of uh, young players, you know, he controlled, uh, you know, uh, the transfer policies, he sorted the contracts out, like I mentioned, um, he did buy some players, but he also developed um, a lot of uh, young players in that, um, and Ferguson, you know, had a really long tenure, had a 26-year tenure with Man United, and he had 26 successful years, like I mentioned, um, with uh, Man United, um, so, um, like I mentioned, you know, regardless um, of who our manager is, you know, we never, no manager will invoke Ferguson's legacy at Manchester United or any other club, you know, will put that into the equation. Um, Solskjaer definitely can't invoke Ferguson's legacy to save him at Man United. Um, I don't, you know, to be fair, I don't think Solskjaer has, has a philosophy. Solskjaer said at the start of the summer that he believes he's following Alex Ferguson's philosophy because Solskjaer knows that, you know, Ferguson did transform him into a winner. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, maybe even Ferguson will be realising now that, you know, Solskjaer, he just hasn't got it as a manager to succeed. As, as a player, he succeeded, but he just isn't good enough, you know, to succeed um, as a manager. And that's just, you know, the way um, it is, basically. And, you know, like I mentioned, managers, you know, don't get the time now, you know, that they would like, you know, obviously, because, you know, this is this generation, you know, the boards are a lot more ruthless than that. Um, and that. But like I mentioned, you know, when Ferguson first got recommended in, you know, he didn't win out in his first uh, four uh, years at um, the football club. Um, like I mentioned, he didn't win out in his first uh, four years. And, you know, obviously the boards were... Had, 
the boards were a lot softer then and you know after that four year period I think Ferguson was on the verge of getting out of the sack but um, obviously you know when we didn't and then obviously you know look what a year went um, and, uh, look what a year went um, and, and produced you know he um, had a tw you know he uh, had a 20 odd years of success so he look what he went and accomplished and that and um and uh, yeah, but you know we haven't only um, you know spent big on players. You know we've also now got players um, on big uh, contract term um, at the football club. You know where uh, like I do uh, keep uh, mentioning. You know like I uh, do uh, keep uh, mentioning. You know we've got um, you know Rashford on three hundred grand a week. You got Martial on two hundred grand a week. Um, you've got a. Um, you know, you've got Lingard on just over um a hundred grand a week, you know, you've got um Pobre on two hundred ninety grand a week, you've got Harry Maguire on two hundred grand a week, you've got like I mentioned, you've got David De Gea on three hundred and seventy five uh, grand um, a week. Um, you know, actually David De Gea is the uh, the highest uh, paid uh, goalkeeper um in the world. Um so we have got players um on big uh, contract as well, um at the football club. Um but like I said, you know, the areas Man United need to strengthen up for debt for for I can assure is, you know, we definitely need a midfielder. We need to reinvest in that uh, midfield. We definitely need to reinvest in that midfield because um, that's one of the priority areas where we need to strengthen up. Um, we need, we definitely need, we need a striker. We need, you know, someone that can um, assure us goals. You know, we need someone that can be effective in the box and we need to recruit recruit a replacement uh, for uh, Romelu Lukaku, uh, basically. Um, and in the midfield, obviously, we need to recruit a replacement uh, for Ander Herrera. And I think, you know, that could be another one one of the mistakes uh, from Manchester United. You know, was obviously not letting uh, Amanda Herrera go because you could arguably say Amanda Herrera, you know, was uh, one of our uh, best uh, players, you know, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson and Herrera and that. And we do, we are aware, you know, the difference, you know, when we did uh, make him um, in that midfield of course um, and um, Herrera um, and I was even infuriated more you know that we uh, let um, and Herrera uh, go um, on a free transfer that really um, infuriated me um, but we've obviously you know just got to get digging now and we've got to uh, get um, a replacement for him um, in January uh, without um, a shadow of a doubt and like I mentioned anyway I think you know we look exposing that attacking line you know following the you know departures of Lukaku and Sanchez and obviously you know we've had injuries to Martial and Rashford and that this season um, we've only scored nine goals this season in the Premier League in eight Premier League games um, you know we've actually in the games we have scored in this season we've scored one goal in every game prior to the Chelsea game on the um, opening day um, this season you know where we actually you know did uh, win uh, that particular game uh, by uh, four goals uh, to nil um, but um, yeah and um you know, like I mentioned, you know, we have got a lot of uh, players and our players um, on our agenda, you know, who we could uh, go in for them um, in January, like I mentioned. I think it's probably, it's very probable that we're going to probably sign Mario Manzuki um, in January because I think, you know, he's our, our top priority for January. Uh, reports recently came out and said, you know, Man United have reportedly reached a verbal agreement with Juventus for Mario Manzuki. Man United only have to pay around 9 or 10 million for him, which is obviously a cheaper solution than that. Um, and it's obviously, you know, reflecting on his age because Mario Manzuki is obviously now around uh, 33 uh, years in the age so he's only probably got a, a couple of years in him left he's probably got a couple of years left in his uh, football in her career obviously Mario Manzuki has not played a minute of football you know under Maurizio Sarri's uh, guidance uh, so far uh, this season uh, reportedly Man United are willing to hand Mario Manzuki an 18 month contract we're set to give him around 4.4 million a year. That's his, you know, annual salary, uh, which equates to around eighty-five thousand uh, pounds um, a week, basically. Uh, but I think, you know, he can assure us them goals that we do need. I probably could emulate. He could emulate into Zlatan Ibrahimovic, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I think he can, you know, uh, be um, effective um, in the box. Um, you know, during his t tenure with Juventus, he's, you know, bagged forty. I think he's bagged around forty-four goals in hundred and sixty-two uh, appearances. Uh, don't forget, Man United did inquire about getting him uh, towards uh, the back end um, of the summer transfer window but we're convinced we can you know uh, get him a deal um, over the line for him um there's a lot of other players on our agenda as well who we could go in for in January. Uh, we could leave some until next summer. Like I said, I think we'll probably do the vast majority of our transfer business next summer and that, um, we'll look, or maybe only sign one or two uh, players um, in January. Um, but we could have a new manager by January. So, you know, he's obviously got different... Well, actually... Don't forget, Allegri said he also wants to be Mario Manzuki anyway. He also wants to be Emre Channing. Obviously, you know, they're 
them two obviously you know currently uh, play uh, for uh, Juventus obviously Emre Chant um, is a former uh, Liverpool uh, player I think Juventus actually if I'm right did get Emre Chant um, on a free transfer um, <coughs> <coughs> but I do believe the players we was in for during the summer, you know, will reignite our interest in, you know, some of them in January, and we'll probably, you know, will uh, leave uh, some of them until uh, next summer. But uh, probably, you know, a su another substantial amount, you know, definitely needs to be spent spent at the football club, you know, if we want to get the players, you know, that we do need. But like I mentioned, it, you know, it's not always about, you know, uh, spending a uh, big um, on players, um you know, sometimes it's actually beneficial, you know, to be, you know, sensible with you with your recruitment. You know, like I mentioned, you know, Liverpool have, you know, been very, very uh, sensible uh, with theirs, you know, so we'll see what happens. So it's going to be a very, very um, big uh, game on Sunday, you know, like I mentioned. You know, Liverpool defensively are fantastic. Uh, they've got good attacking intent and that. And they've got really, really good players, like I mentioned um, on my uh, previous uh, videos. Um but we'll see. So, anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider uh, subscribing, um, as always. And uh, take care, God bless. And I'll see you all again very, very soon. And there will be more videos, um, I should presume, uh, coming up uh, tomorrow. So, take care, God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.